welcome to Anoki Pulse TV, your weekly fix of everything that's got you thinking, talking, and clicking. I'm Bill Shad. And I'm Daniel. Today's show gives you a complete 360 view at some of the world's biggest festivals, covering everything from movies to music. You got it, Daniel. We're going to kick off this episode by taking a look at South by Southwest, one of the world's biggest film, music, and interactive festivals that brings together creative arts and technology and has served as the launch pad for some of the biggest discoveries across all those platforms. Now, there's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. Celebrating three decades in spectacular style, South by Southwest interactive keynote session featured none other than... Hey! As the first sitting president ever to attend the festival, Obama's core message was to inspire techies to work with the government to help it foster civic engagement in a digital age. But his cool factor took a beating when it came to the ongoing Apple versus FBI encryption debate. It's fetishizing uh, our phones uh, above every other value. Which cost him more than a few points with the Twitter Addy. Thanks, Obama. Now, the other half of the first couple was also on hand. Michelle Obama headlined the music keynote discussing Let Girls Learn, a White House initiative dedicated to educating 62 million girls around the world. The keynote was accompanied by the release of a brand new all-star anthem called This Is For My Girls, and Apple, AOL, and Motown Records will donate 100% of the proceeds from its sales to the Peace Corps' Let Girls Learn Fund. Put your hands up high. Speaking of new music, of course, South by Southwest showcases a lot of it, both mainstream and independent, with big names like Iggy Pop, Erica Badu, and Steve Aoki performing, among many, many others. On the film side, actress and producer Ellen Page and her friend and collaborator Ian Daniel gave a keynote interview speaking about their docu-series Gaycation in which they explore LGBTQI cultures across the globe. Here's an opportunity to go make something that allows voices to be heard that sometimes you just don't ever hear. In that same vein, the festival prides itself on championing a wide array of voices through film, like the 10-minute short The Star dealing with social tensions post 9-11, to more mainstream features like the much-anticipated Keanu by Key and Peele. I want you to meet Keanu. And if all that wasn't enough, South by Southwest also highlights new and emerging technologies. This year, trend watchers are keeping a close eye on apps like the J.J. Abrams-backed video sharing platform Nomi, an audio-based social network anchor that lets users interact via voice clips. The International Indian Film Academy Awards bring out the biggest and the brightest Bollywood stars year after year, traveling to a new international destination each time. And 2016 is taking the bold beauty of Bollywood to Spain and promises to be as hot as paella. In years past, we've seen the IFA Awards hit China, Sri Lanka, Singapore, London, and even Toronto. This year, the Golden Sunburst Trophy makes its stop in Madrid. All right, IFA, here we come. To kick things in high gear, Bollywood superstars Anil Kapoor, Hrithik Roshan, and Sonakshi Sinha visited the lavish Spanish city for IFA 2016's official press launch. And boy, was it lavish. We love you, brother! With throngs of fans, a Bollywood flash mob right in Madrid city square, Spanish food, street art, architecture, and even some good old Spanish dance lessons. <laughs> Director of IFA and Wizcraft International, Andre Timmins, expressed his excitement over the new host city. 2016 marks the 60-year friendship between India and Spain. We feel this is the right time to showcase our culture and Bollywood. That's right, the Spanish culture is no stranger to the Bollywood film scene. No debía la mirada. 2011's box office hit Zindagi na Milagi Dubara was shot on location in Spain, capturing the picturesque cities and towns of Barcelona, Costa Brava, and Valencia. Remember Uri Teriyanko Se from Guzarish? The song showcases Ashwarya Rai Bachchan in full flamenco form. Take Piari Kige Kahani from Honeymoon Travels, where we see Abedio and Manisha Lamba moving to the Spanish sounds of love and seduction. Inspired by a religious devotional song, Krish 3's Raghupati Raghav also has some Spanish inspiration, with lyrics that many Spaniards would find familiar. So get your Spanish hand fans and sangrias ready, Aifa is heading to Spain. No desvíe la mirada.
Now, speaking of Bollywood stars, let's talk about that handsome hunk, John Abraham. Now, you know I've got the biggest crush on him. And I don't know if that's the case anymore after one of his recent interviews where he opened up about the pay gap. Mm -hmm. And we know that's been a hot topic in Hollywood between men and women. Yes. And it's always been the case, actually, when it's come to Bollywood cinema. And John has revealed that as an actor and as a producer, he's kind of taken the lesser paycheck than some of his leading ladies. Hmm. And I know you've got a lot to say about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's really relevant when it comes to being a producer of a film. Of course, sometimes when the film doesn't make money, the producer isn't able to cut himself a big enough check. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that he was paying the actresses more by design. And you know what? A lot of women have come to the forefront talking about this. You know, very famously, Patricia Arquette, during yes. her Oscar speech, has spoken about the pay gap. Jennifer Lawrence has opened up about that. Absolutely. But I think as a man, contributing to that conversation and having that viewpoint is kind of problematic. Absolutely. I mean, given the historical nature of the treatment of women in film, you know, it's necessary to have male allies to help contribute positively to the conversation mm -hmm. and help bridge that gap. Yep. I think one of the men that did that really well was Bradley Cooper yes. when we're talking about American Hustle, when it was discovered that the pay gap was so vast between his pay and the two women in the film, which was Jennifer Lawrence and Amy Adams. Of course, Bradley Cooper said that he would be more open with his co-stars about his wages, even though nobody likes to talk about money. But if it helps women negotiate better, then he's going to do that. Yes, and you know what? In line with Bradley Cooper, I think Shah Rukh Khan has been very vocal about equal pay for women. In the 2000s, Madhuri Dixit even made it into the Guinness Book of World Records, getting paid the same per film for Shah Rukh Khan. So right. I think things have changed. And Priyanka Chopra recently had opened up about one of her experiences, saying that when she couldn't be part of a film based on her date, mm -hmm. the producer said, oh, it's okay, you're replaceable anyways. And I think what she said is very important for us to take into consideration here, the idea that the women are replaceable. Absolutely. Coming back to a Amy Adams, actually, she said that as well, that if she continued to push for more pay, that she would be replaced. Mm -hmm. And I think that also comes down to treating actresses and female performers as labor rather than artists. I think it's indicative of this need for a change in how we think about the entire situation. Absolutely. So there's a lot of levels to this and we want to know what you think about the issues as well. You can interact with us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's it from us. Ta da till next time. Ciao. Don't forget to stay in the loop for your weekly dose of entertainment glitz and glam with Anoki Pulse TV. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for exclusive access to all that's happening behind the velvet rope.